What is up, guys? And of course, welcome to the quarterfinal of the Vela Pokemon League, which are surely, of course, the Scarender, and we're going against our very, very mighty opponent in Necursivo. Now, before going into the game, I do want to kind of throw out what my main reasoning and what we're going up against, basically. Uh, we fought each other before, and I, to be honest, I barely won that one, and I actually... I'll be honest and say that he played that game a lot better versus me, so I was pretty scared going into this battle because I do realize that Necrosivo is one of those battlers that have a very easy time throwing me off and I really need to prep for everything basically and I really can't play as hyper offensively as I wish versus him because it's quite a bulky team. And I was really happy to see two monsters didn't make it, one of them being actually Vaporeon, the other one being Volcarona. Uh, both doing tremendously well versus me, but also see that he optimized for using his Venusaur to get which withdrawal from Ninetales. So that means that we don't need to watch out for that, so that's always tremendous. Um, quick overview here, I do kind of say that I am a bit scared of Magnuson and Hydreigon, they both did really well against me last time, and... Um, well, I expect him to do juice as well, so I really don't want to deal with them all that well. And of course, Law Pony is always good, and this is Mega Law Pony, of course. Last time I actually took Law Pony out really early with uh, Chuckleberry Gigalith with Superpower. I can't I can't use that this time around, as I use Stumpling this time. I do want to use my Gigalith actually as a possible check to Volcarona, which should make it, and of course, keep the sand up for Stumpling. So with that said, we have an Infernape, which is Life Orb, Iron Fist, with Thunder Punch, Gunk Shot, um, Mag Punch, and uh, Overheat. Overheat basically is Abuse Trot, uh, since it actually does fairly alright, and I can keep pushing with Mag Punch, which can do super effective hits, versus the majority of his team, actually. Clefable, Life Orb, Virgins, Super Bulky, able to deal with Law Punish, can want to kill that, and just overall, it's really annoying. Move Blast, Fire Blast, Calm Mind, and Soft World. Gigalith. Uh, leftovers to get with the likes of Toxic, Stealth Rocks, Rock Blast, and uh, Earthquake. So no superpower this time. Flyam C Gyarados with uh, <clears throat> with um, Substitute, uh, Waterfall, and um, what's it? Waterfall Bounce and uh, Dragon Dance. Uh, this set was actually made to possibly sweep, but Consider the matchup we don't save a Porion, I can't abuse the substitute, which means that I need to avoid that completely. So Jardos kinda waste of this matchup, though Intimidate is gonna be really, really important versus Lop and it's gonna keep that intact. Among us has been a Salt Vest variant with the Hidden Power Rock, Volcarona, Stomp and Transom from Magnuson, Sledgebomb, and Gidrain. <clears throat> Honestly, Among Us could very well win this matchup alone. I just need to watch out for Ninetales. Um, and of course Fire Blast from Hydreigon, but other than that, Among Us is actually really, really well, or it can be used really well versus Stevo. so I'm gonna use that in Best Bone Ability, and Stealthland with Return, Superpower, Crunch, and Fizzard, just in case I get like a status I'm not nerfed by anyway. Uh, I do want to say that my opponent do have Dewblade, I'm really glad I didn't say Dewblade because it does kind of wall my <laughs> my stealth land and pursuit would have been an option, but I'm glad I didn't do that. Crunch seems to be quite wasteful towards this matchup. So, yeah, with really all of this said, let's actually go into the match itself. Now, from the get go here, I did lead off with my Jardos, and the reason for that was because I did what I called Law Pony earlier, who was a fake out lead. And we do see Magnuson here, and well, I don't have Earthquake, so. Of course, need to switch out, so it <laughs> shouldn't come as a surprise at all, I guess. As um, well, that's what I'll do. So, Among Us is my easiest switch in, as my opponent here is going to go directly for Thunderbolt. And this shows that it is not Specs, so it could be Scarf, but it goes Substitute, so it's not Scarf either. And I went directly for a Stomping Tantrum. Now, here's the thing I was breaking him to switch out, so I actually went for a Sludge Bomb, which shows me Magnet Rise. So, now I'm pretty sure that he's going to be. Well, gonna be want to stay in, so with that in mind, I'm actually gonna go for a, a Giga Drain here. Basically, what I want to do is work him down because I expect him to try to wheel me down to a range where a uh, C um, Flash can could potentially take me out, and I am definitely in that range now. So, um, basically, I think I need to be roughly 
below 60 and that's a guaranteed KO uh, if he's a modest set so I, I'll keep keep going attacking him of course but quite frankly like I said now I'm in range I need to switch out and I expect him to try to go for the KO so I am actually switching out myself to Jarlos uh, mainly here it's actually just so to hit but it's going to be analytic boost as it's going to hurt <laughs> but at least we can take it and I can switch him back to my Mongus just like I said, it would let this Pokemon down since, well, Thunderbolt nor Flash can really does that much to me, though the analytic boost is unfortunate. So, he'll go for attacks, you know, I'll go for the honest Gatorade, and quite frankly, you know, that's all I really can do. But I do want to keep myself fairly healthy, I don't want to wheel myself too much down, so I actually want to switch back to my Jardos. But he switches out himself to um, the Hydreigon, I can't stay in Vesta's stats, I gotta go into Clefable. And he's gonna go for a substitute. So basically, here we go again. I was thinking, because all I really can do from here is actually go for a call mine. I felt this was well, very, very free setup, and I can, well, allegedly force him out. Uh, so it brings in Mangazone, and uh, I went for softball. Now here is where things get strange because I probably should have attacked here. I got a bit greedy because I was thinking I'm slower. I'm not really boosted. I'm not gonna be put in range. But well. Flash can just hold on actually, and I'm not particularly safe here. I'll keep going for Calm Minds, but basically if I go for the KO, I'm not going to be healthy enough to deal with the Law Pony, and that's not something I want to be forced to be dealing with. So with that said, I just basically get myself in decent amount of range of HP to be able to switch out to my Jardos, and I'm going to directly go for the, C, the Flying C, because like I said before, Jardos kind of waste of this matchup and really can't do a whole lot, so at least I can do get some massive damage. Luckily for me, he does switches the Flodius, which will take this. It's a defensive Flodius, alright, but I at least get it below half, so he's kind of wish pass versus me, which is awesome. And I'll follow that up with a waterfall and, um, well, whittle down the Hydreigon, so that's kind of cool. And um, <clears throat> my easiest switch he needs to bring back to Cliff Fable. But he goes directly for a substitute again and will activate the Citrus Berry. I did not think about what that means, but it means that he has Belch. And that's really spicy. I'm glad I went for Sopal to just check what he's gonna do, but I'm not gonna stay in there, no way. As he's gonna go for another Belch. So, we're, like I said, we're Assault Vessels, we can take that all day. And I can just try to abuse it basically and. Uh, Force him to go for a fire blast was I was hoping, but no, he went for neutral fire dark pulse. Since I have um, rock blast, I can easily knock him out with substitute and whittle him down. So I'm not fair in this matchup, even though it actually stings quite a lot. I am lucky here to not get flinched. And uh, well, we start the hurting now. <clears throat> the thing is, here I'm not scared of Hydreigon as long as the sand is raging on. So I'm actually gonna go directly for Stealth Rocks very quickly. So we got Stealth Rocks off the field, so just pressure nine tails. Uh, we still are six for six, which is incredible. 27 turns in. But I'm predicting here to either go for Synthesis or Toxic versus Gilius. So I'm gonna switch into my Stealth Lin, but no. Synthesis, which was I did not expect that as. Um, if it was a wish, I was definitely expecting the likes of uh, Magnuson to come in, but no, I can freely go for return here and knock out the Flodius. And um, the Sands of Suicide is supposed to do that. The Law Pony comes in, I do not particularly like the Law Pony, as my easy switching is to bring Jarados here and sack it, uh, because my main plan here is to bring in Clefable to go for recovery, because my only way of doing so is probably versus Law Pony after it's intimidated, and that's, that's about it. Because now it does roughly around 30, so I'm feeling that this this is definitely my best call. As um, the nine tails comes in, the draws this here, you know, everything is all wrong. But at least considering Gigalith, can I check in that and definitely negate uh, anything it wants to try to do, uh, and definitely stop in the chlorophyll. Now I was feeling that this play was a bit strange, but it also makes a ton of sense depending on how you want to do it. I was expecting here uh, for an attacking move, but it actually goes to sleep powder. And I was thinking, you know, having a Magus, it, it definitely doesn't make any sense risking that, but at the same time, he gets momentum from this. And I can't stop him at all. I know I can survive any hit he goes for, uh, but it does score a crit on me, which is unfortunate, but I still would have been a 2 hit kill. Um, the thing is, here, I'm gonna keep staying in because I feel that he has a higher risk here than I do, but I should sleep for two turns, which means that I'm guaranteed to wake up next turn, which is, well, good, but at the same time, it's kind of tough for him. He could definitely risk that and knock me out. 
So we do keep our Southland and uh, we get our second KO. And uh, well, things looking looking kind of kind of cool right now. As Lopin again comes in, this time I really just felt my easiest play is to go for Clayble because it can take anything he wants to go for. And I can soft pull up versus this. Unless he has Para Punch, I really don't have to fear this matchup at all. And I, I will keep soft boiling. Like, this is one of those things that I would say is um, <clears throat> kind of kind of boring to look at. But I really would just want to keep myself in a fair range where I can deal with the Hydreigon too. Uh, as long as it stays in like this, it's going to lose the law upon If it loses the law upon I could very, very well wrap up. And uh, he's persistent and keep going for the returns. And I eventually here do gather my strength there and go for the Moonblast and knock the law upon out. I don't believe he thought it was my orb, so I think that's why I kept attacking. So Hydreigon comes in. Um, <clears throat> the best I can do versus Hydreigon is bring in Among Us now because it can do. It doesn't necessarily care about the Hadrian at all, as I can actually freely go for a Sludge Bomb. I do get flinched here once, unfortunately, uh, but um, well, it, it, it's alright since we aren't that twice and we knock out Hadrian. So his two remaining Pokemon are the Weather Core in Venusaur and Night Hills, and he does the right play go for Venusaur because he can easily have speed and knock me out. Uh, I myself got a Sactic Fable because I really, really don't see the point of keeping it alive. As I can ease listening in for if we go for an overheat, and even if he goes for his nine tails against the overheat, it will take a lot of damage due to the draw that it's gonna boost for me. As you guys will see, it's it's close to KO. Mac Punch luckily will wrap that up more for me, and that will only leave the Venusaur left. And at this point, yeah, we got this in the bag. We actually, like considering how the last game versus Steve went. I felt I had a lot better control here. I definitely didn't feel as easily forced out as I did last time. Um, I mean, we are closing in what I believe is a 50 turn battle, or at least close to. And the other battle wasn't even close to that. And the only reason it isn't that is because um, I, I played a lot more defensively this time. And it, it turned out really alright. I really just want to kind of state that. And, for what it's worth that I usually play a lot more offensively and if you guys of course know that already versus Steve this time I really want to take a more defensive route and <clears throat> I think I was able to kind of pull what he did to me in the last game which was stopping my offensive momentum this time I had no intention of getting offensive momentum whatsoever just stopping his momentum and then basically get the lead way towards my offensive Pokemon to be able to do damage uh, and I think it worked a lot better for me than it did for him in the last game. Like I said, the last game, he probably should have won that game. Um, the two Pokemon I was leveling between was Stavland, Tabakoku, or Latios for my team. I definitely felt Tabakoku made a ton of sense. But looking at this matchup, I'm really glad I didn't. Uh, because it definitely wouldn't have worked in my favor. But keeping Stavland here was very, very essential. While I do believe... Stealthland wasn't an effective Pokemon. It did force him to juggle Wigger back and forth if you know he could stay in versus a certain matchup, and I really appreciated that because it made my place a lot easier. But also, I need to credit Nicker Steve for for <laughs> for the god honest truth that is that his hydrating with Belchier and the Magnified Substitute Magnuson really those two Pokemon, <laughs> like last time were a tremendous threat towards my team and Maker C we use that excellently. I'm very lucky here that I play defensively versus both of these sets and actually recover instead of attacking them because I think had I attacked them I would have lost my defensive aspect completely towards the team. So I'm really glad that didn't happen at the same time. I kinda want you to say that had I play like I usually do, I would never win versus a team like this and I just do a brought. I mean I I played defensively and I played really, really boring, and then it paid off here. And um, it, it hurts to see it work so effectively, but at the same time, I, I did what was required to deal with Necro Steve and have had a very, very controlled game. Um, so, everybody who's watching, thank you for doing so. And Necro Steve, as always, thank you for this season, man. You really, really knocked it out of the park. I'm, I'm actually a bit bummed that you had to, that I had to face you this early because I think you. Well, all the people that are remaining are the strongest battlers around, and I really, really 
think you are definitely one of the better ones and I yeah, think yeah I just think that was unfortunate that I got this out this early I really think you made it a lot further had you not faced me in the quarterfinals um, and I think of course I had the matchup and the soldier played to pull this off which I didn't last time we fought so for those watching I think we're doing some really great to have you guys here and uh, well I'll see you around have a great day buddies bye